You purchased a signal conditioner from Automation Direct. Now you need to program it. In this video, we'll show you some of the simple programming steps to get your signal conditioner out of the box and into production. We currently have two models of universal transmitter signal conditioners. For sake of ease, we'll refer to all the parts here by their last three digits and the part numbers. We have a 116 that has incorporated relay contact outputs. We have a 114 with no relay contact outputs, but all the other features are the same. We also have a 105 programmer. You'll need at least one programmer in order to program either signal conditioner. Features of the signal conditioners include they're DIN rail mountable and screw mountable. They have removable key terminal blocks on the top and the bottom. And these won't allow you to place the terminal blocks in the wrong place. You can remove the programmer and the conditioner will run as a standalone unit. The programmer can be left attached and you can read the values and messages. Now it has three line display. One programmer works with both signal conditioners. You can upload and download programs with a 105 programmer, but the programs must match the signal conditioner type. For instance, if you upload a program from a 114 or non-relay type, then you can only download to that same type. It will not allow you to upload and download from a 114 to a 116 or a relay type and vice versa. You'll get a mismatched type error. Password protection is available and there's a full range of available inputs and outputs as shown here. The quick start guide that comes with the unit can also be downloaded from our website. It includes all the wiring diagrams and setup guides with several application examples. In our example today, we'll go over setting up our 116 model for a three wire RTD input, a one to five volt DC output, and our relay contact will close at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If you have any questions about how we wired this unit, please go back and watch our first video of why you would need a signal conditioner. We included a wiring diagram of the setup that we used in the first video. The 105 programming unit has a three line display but can only display four characters on the first line. So most messages will be abbreviated. Now all the abbreviations are on the supplied quick start guide. If I power up my unit here that has no inputs or outputs wired to it, you can see that it shows a message SE.BR, which means a sensor wire is not connected. On this unit, everything is wired up and programmed, so on power up it shows the current temperature readings. To set up our RTD input, we press OK, and it asks if we want to go to Advanced Setup. Advanced Setup will allow you to upload and download programs. We'll cover that in a moment. Make sure it says no then press OK. Input type. You can select one of the many types in our case we're using an RTD. So we're reading temperature. We select temp. Type of temperature device. In our case we're using a PT sensor. We know this because we have specs that came with our RTD. Type of PT sensor. Ours is a type 100. Again, we know this from our RTD specs. Connection type. There are two, three, and four wire RTDs. We're using a three wire RTD. Units, we chose to use Fahrenheit instead of Celsius. Set P, this is the setup of the relays on the 116 model. They have two programmable relays. We're only using one of them, R1. NO, which is normally open. So we want the relay to close when our temperature reaches 70 degrees Fahrenheit. R1 set point. Again, 70 degrees is where we want the relay to close. INCR. You can select whether you want the relay to activate as the temperature increases or decreases. For example, our application may run around 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So if it hits 70 degrees, we want it to alarm, so we're using INCR. But what if our application ran at 90 to 100 degrees and we wanted it to alarm when it drops below 70 degrees? That's when you would use DECR. 1.0 on our hysteresis. Well, we left this at default, but hysteresis is sort of like 
the buffer to the reaction of the set point. Now you can find more on hysteresis if you go out and do some web searching. Hold. Hold the relay status at air. If the unit detects an error, like a broken wire on input, then we want the unit to stay where it was at when the error occurred. So if the relay was open, it stays open. On delay. Relay delay in time measurement or seconds. Well, we have ours at 0.0, .0 so we don't want to lag. Your application may be that you run real close to the R1 set point. So if it reaches your error temperature, you don't want it to alarm for a few seconds. Well, we want ours to alarm immediately. Off delay. Just the same thing, but basically opposite. When our temperature drops below 70 degrees F, do we want it to react instantly or wait? Off. This is the R2, our second relay setting. We're not using R2, so we have it off. It's the same settings we just covered for R1. You just have the availability to set up two output relays on the 116 models. Outputs. Ours is set for volts. You have volts or current available. 1 to 5 volts is our output range. We needed a range that would work with our click PLC. NL it accept a 1 to 5 volt range on the input of the analog channel. 0.0, .0 output low. This is our temperature low level. We don't care what happens if the temperature drops below 0 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not in a range. Well, 100.00, output high. This is our temperature high level. We don't care if the temperature goes above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Ours would already be in an alarm state. Hopefully someone would be there correcting the problem or shutting down the machine. Wait. Wait means the 105 programmer is downloading the program to our 116 signal conditioner. Now we can either leave the 105 unit attached and read the values and messages, or we can remove it and the unit will operate without the programming device. Uploading and downloading programs. Real quick, you can upload a program to the 105 after a signal conditioner has been programmed, then disconnect and download the same program to multiple signal conditioners as long as they are same type or same model. Now here's how. When you first go into the menu, Select Yes under Advanced Setup. Setup. We want to choose MEM for memory. Here you can also calibrate the unit, change the language, and more. Memory. Either save or load. Save will save the program from the signal conditioner into the 501 programmer. Load will send the program from the 501 to the signal conditioner. With either selection, weight will be displayed, which means the memory is transferring. Once weight is no longer displayed, the transfer is complete. Hope this wasn't too much to absorb in a short video, and we hope you're on your way to using your new universal transmitter signal conditioners from Automation Direct. Thanks for watching. See you soon.